Hello friends, welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to go for a drive in my Tesla. Now I bought it last year and I love the car because we raise all of our own electricity here, but I did not buy the full self-driving. In fact, if I'm really honest, I'm a skeptic about the ability of full self-driving. However, over the last month, Tesla gave us a free month's worth, so we're going to test it. But this one is different than all the other tests you've seen because we're going to go for a ride in the country. Okay, this really isn't a tech video. And those of you who are not familiar with full self-driving, this is the Tesla version 12, and it's the only one that's prepared by AI. So it's going to be kind of interesting to see how it goes. What I do like is that it gives you the option to match your driving style. It can be aggressive, it can be a standard, or it can be a chill. Now I put it on chill, and let's see how it goes. We did a lot of driving over the last few weeks and really 99% of the time the car performed beautifully. Now we're going to show you a few segments here where there may be some issues so it's not really fair to line up all the issues to make it look like that's how the car is performing. So uh, with that footnote, let's get to it. Okay to get started we left the farm and right down the road there's a traffic signal. The car did a great job at stopping for the red light. And if you look closely, you see a sign, no turn on red. Uh-oh. The car actually turned right on red and went so fast it knocked the camera off the dash. I wanted to see how the vehicle would handle a traffic circle. Now, if you see the flashing on blue, that means I didn't touch the steering wheel to take control. That's a warning. But here we go around the circle. It's well controlled. It's a little faster than I would have gone, but it really did a great job. One other segment here before we head out into the country. We're driving along at 25 mile an hour and all of a sudden, boom, the vehicle slowed down to 15 miles an hour. Why? So we stopped and I turned around and looked. Upon closer examination, I saw a 15 mile an hour speed limit sign that was facing up into the neighborhood. So this was a sharp corner and the vehicle was looking forward, not on the road it was, but into the neighborhood and it saw the 15. So minor issue. In this section we test road hazards. Um, we're known for having a lot of potholes in the rural area here in Pennsylvania. So we tested to see how the car would respond. The other thing is that a lot of these rural roads followed property lines of farms and many times there's very sharp corners because the the road follows the property line exactly and if the car follows the speed limit for that road you're in trouble. I really wanted to see if the car was able to look at secondary signs and here in Pennsylvania they're usually in yellow and they have curves on it to show so we put the car to a test. Next we're going to look at potholes out in the country in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of potholes and we're rather adept in avoiding them. And I want to check out to see how the full self-driving handled potholes. Here's a whole series of potholes here and like, whoa, it hit, hit them all. Now you notice there was no traffic in the other lane and it could have swerved just a few feet left to avoid these potholes. And when you look at the still pictures to see how deep they are, they could do serious damage to the rim. And if you were traveling faster, it could actually be a danger um, to your safety.
Okay, here's one of these country roads that follows the farm property line exactly. And that probably would have been fine 200 years ago in that horse and buggy. But now, even with the speed limit at only 25 miles an hour, you have to slow down to 15 or 18 miles an hour to negotiate these sharp, sharp turns. And the car did pretty well. It slowed down to about 19. Again, in grandpa mode, it would have gone down to 15, but I guess we're okay. One of the other challenges in the country is there's a lot of animals. Now, some of them have already been hit by a vehicle, but there's a lot of live animals. So we wanted to test to see how the full self-driving supervised handled it. Now, we did a test. We have a 500-foot farm lane, and we just put the dog in the driveway without the vehicle moving to see if the computer um, recognized the animal and the dog. And it clearly did recognize the dog. So I think dogs are safe. And another time uh, when I was driving and I didn't have the camera, a cat ran across and it recognized the cat and had a pretty good looking cat going across the screen. But in these next clips, we're gonna up the ante for a little bit smaller animals, live and dead, to see how the car responds. On this one, we're testing how the vehicle responds to small animals, smaller than dogs and cats. And this one, we're pulling a teddy bear across the road. It's about the size of a small groundhog. And boom! We have a lot of rural streams in the country here, and we'll often find ducks. And occasionally we see mama duck with the little ducklings crossing the road. So we did a test with rubber ducks and pulled them across the road to see if the car would respond. Boom. Uh-oh. Here's a case where we have a dead animal on the road, but in the opposite lane there's a vehicle coming. So the options are limited. It could have swerved to the right a little, but no, we hit the carcass. We wanted to see how the car would handle a deer crossing the road. Because anybody that's around deer know that when one crosses the road, there's going to be more than one. We didn't know if the car would stop to wait to see if there's more or what. So we drove, drove down a road that is known for deer. We see deer every time we drive down this road. And we drove and drove and didn't see a single deer. And finally we gave up, I turned the camera off. And yep, there came a deer across the road. And we quick turned it back on and caught it. And it was only one deer this time. So that was our deer experiment. One of the other hazards that we wanted to see if the Tesla full self-driving recognized is in the rural areas, the farm equipment and tractors. And there's a few in particular that you have to watch out for, particular with uh, manure spreaders or the large tankers that have the liquid manure. You'll want to keep some distance away from that. If you don't want that on your car, you don't want the smell. Now this is a solid waste manure spreader. It has tines in the rear that flings the manure off of the trailer onto the field. Now, most farmers have switched to manure liquid detention pits and they use these tankers to spray the manure into the field.
Now after all of our tests, I think the car has a little bit of work to do, but overall I am no longer a skeptic in full self-driving. I believe within the next year that Tesla is going to bring their full self-driving up to a place where it could operate on its own safely. Now there's a lot of regulatory hurdles to pass, so I don't know how long that will take. And another thing that really encourages me is all the data that they're capturing. Now when we drove with the full self driving, if we had to disengage, there was a, a little alarm, you could push a button on the steering wheel and you reported why you disengaged. So Tesla has viewers that watch that and if it's something important in the development the AI needs to review, then it goes to uh, the AI and it makes corrections in the software. So. I think there's going to be a lot of upgrades in this next year. So I'm very encouraged. Um, I'm still not going to buy it right now. But in the future, when it's authorized for full self-driving, non-supervised, I think I will buy it. Thank you for joining us on the Wardenburg Family Farm. We'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>